for more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Jacob Wilk leads off BYU's fourth inning. His team's down two. That's curveball in uh, ball one. Ryan Torque remains on the hill. Both starting pitchers of Pintar for the year and Gamble for a while. Looking to make up for the absence of those two big bats. Is that foul ball went up and over the screen and bounced about 30 feet to our right in the midst of the fans. A couple of uh, bleacher sections, some picnic table sections and folding chairs and a very uh, chilled out atmosphere. Free admission for St. Mary's baseball this year. There are going to be renovations for stadium seating. The 0-1 on the foul ball. And that's fouled again. Dribble to the padding for 0-2 to Sapiti. So no one out and a runner on first for BYU. That runner's Jacob Wilk with a leadoff single to left here in the fourth. St. Mary's two and BYU zero is our score. The Gales score their two in the second. And BYU's yet to score in the first, second, or third. And again, rare that BYU doesn't have a run by this point in the game. The Cougs have been a very productive early innings team. The 0-2 to Sapiti. The kick and fire from Torque mm, gets him. away from, oh, did hit him. Yeah, so first I'll and second. It. So that clipped him. And the Cougs now have their first two batters aboard here in the fourth thing as they look to rally from down two as St. Mary's rallied from down two yesterday here in Moraga. Sapiti reaches on an HBP. The first hit batsman of the day for Gales pitching. It'll put Wilk at second and bring up Austin Deming. He singled in the second inning and was erased on a 4-6 ground out. As Watkins beat out the would-be 4-6-3 DP. Empty count, no one out, two on for BYU. Cougs have something cooking down two. And corners are expecting a bunt. They're playing in. Dem waggles the bat over his right shoulder. Righty in the box and righty on the mound. Squares and pulls back as that comes inside yeah, for ball gets one. Him there, yeah. Base coaches are Brent Herring at first, Trent Pratt at third. Trent, the uncle of Ozzie Pratt. The 1-0. Sapiti taps the spikes and digs back in. 1 0 to, uh, to the right fielder, Ryan Sapiti. Wilk at second. Or to Deming. Sapiti at first. Deming in the box. Deming squares, lays it down, but foul. Rolls back through the batter's box and to the backstop. It'll be one ball, one strike. Well, this is the same point there in the ninth inning. We couldn't get the sack bunt down. That We need that insurance run that obviously came back and, and bit us in that game. Down two here, two out. One was on first and second, no outs. We're trying to get them to second and third with one out with a good hitter up, coming up in Brock. Got to execute these spots. One ball, one strike, no one out, and two on for BYU. Austin Deming awaits the even count deliveries already squared. Could be a slash here. On Torek here. And Torek will step off, faint towards second. Jacob Wilk at second, Ryan Sapiti at first. Wilk with a single, Sapiti with a hit by pitch. So first and second, no one out. And Deming facing a 1 1 count. Just waves that bat over his right shoulder and now squares. The delivery. And the mm. bunt fouled back to the padding. And so with two strikes, the bunt will be off. Yep, now you battle. You got a hit last time up, now you battle here. Find a way to get the job here, no matter, get the job done no matter what. Coach put on a sign, which is not typical in this situation. So I wonder if he decided to go with the two strike bunt. Tuck it. Um, he doesn't do it. But oh. him oh. giving a sign there kind of makes me wonder. All right, let's see. We'll follow this up in a moment. One and two. Is the count with no one out and two on for BYU? Nah, he's hidden. Tark facing Deming and the step off. So I asked Mike about it yesterday morning at the hotel, and he said he thinks he can count on one hand the number of times yeah. he has had a bunt called with two with a two yeah, strike count. In my six years, I can count a zero. <laughs> so <laughs> you can fit a zero on, on one yeah, hand. You can. The one two. Slight breeze out to right center, and that's dirted. And the ball hit Deming, helped the catcher keep a beat on that. Runners will stay where they are. The count goes to two and two. BYU down two. 
But the Cougs have something percolating here in Moraga. Yeah, the ball was blocked by the catcher, and then it just kind of stuck on Deming's foot. Wilk thought about going to third, but you can't get thrown out there with no outs. Cougs have lost 10 games this year. Nine of the 10 losses, they've scored four or fewer. Yesterday, one of those games, lost 4-3. 2-2. Deming Great checks, take. holds back, and a take for ball three. The count is full with no one out and runners on second and first. Wilk at second, Sapedi at first. Deming in the batter's box on a one-for-one one day after a two-for-four outing yesterday. So three-for-five in the series. BYU's third baseman, Austin Deming, looking to put the, put the Cougars on the board for the first time today. A big spot here. Knock a walk here. Walk would load the bases, but no one out. Torque from the stretch, and that Plus is hit well. solidly to left field. Well. Back goes the left fielder to yes, the wall. It is. And over, it's a three-run home run. A Zions Bank home run for Austin Deming as the Cougars take the lead on a three-run shot to left. And that's why you don't bunt with two strikes, Greg. <laughs> Nicely done, Austin Deming. We needed that one. Boy, he needed that one. For Great banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you and Austin Deming. A three-run home run to left. Second home run of the year for Dem, and just like that, the Cougs go from down 2-0 to leading 3-2 and still no one out here in the fourth inning. Hey, great swing there, Austin. Three-run home run. Clears the bases and brings Brock Watkins to the dish. And that's hit up the middle. Short baseman, uh, set, a shortstop right. ranges over. And the second him. base <laughs> handles the grounder and fires to get Watkins at first. So well done by the shortstop as that ball was up the middle. And angling for a base hit was Watkins, but racing over and collecting was the shortstop Campos. The fire to Almanza and one gone here in the top of the fourth. So BYU three and St. Mary's two fouled out of play by Mason Strong hitting out of the eight hole. Watkins a moment ago retired on the 6-3 ground out. No balls on the strike here to Mason Strong. BYU three, St. Mary's two. Breaking pitch in four, strike two, 0-2. Oh, two to Mason Strong, one out, no one on here in the top of the fourth inning. That was barreled to left field. Yes, it was. Big spot in the game for Deming to have that knock. Timely hitting, as that's a grounder to third. Nice handle on the short stop, uh, by, on the short hop by Santiago. Fires to Almanza, two gone here in the top of the fourth. So 6-3 ground out followed by a 5-3 ground out. And the Cougs have two out with the bottom of the order. Nine hitter, Ozzie Pratt. Pratt grounded out to first in the third. And Ozzie's 0 for 5 for the series. Two out and bases empty. BYU three runs, four hits. St. Mary's two runs on five hits. The big hit, a three run. Austin Deming home run with no one out here in the fourth inning. Brought home Wilk and Sapedi in front of him. Pitch it well, play catch, and timely hitting. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it comes down to. Uh, win your ball games. 0-1 with two out. A high kick and delivery. That's low for ball one. The home plate umpire today is Matthew Stelgis. Again at first is Tony Prater, Barney Navarro at second, and Josh Gottlieb at third. We're at Louis Gisto Field here in Moraga. 3.30 down the lines, 3.70 in the alleys, and 400 to straight away. The kick and fire, and that striped foul on the ground toward the BYU dugout. One ball, two strikes. Two out, no one on for BYU. We're in the top of the fourth. BYU's gone from trailing 2-0 to begin the inning to leading 3-2, thanks to Austin Deming. Deming's having himself a series. Yes, he is. So far. Four hits on the weekend already. The 1-2, and that's dirted for ball two. Austin Deming is now four for six. And three RBI all coming on that blast to left a few moments ago. His last five games, he now has five RBI. Yeah. 
The 2-2. Two -two. That's lifted into the, ha the horn sounds there because it it's, it's headed for the pool, and it bounces into the pool. So behind us and to tuck its left shoulder is the recreation complex that features an outdoor pool. When folks are in the pool, they blow the air horn when a foul ball heads that direction as it did just then. The 2-2. Two, two. two out, no one on, and that's taken for strike two. It's a backwards K, and Ozzie Pratt is retired. So we go to the bottom of the fourth for BYU beginning. Top of the fourth features three runs on two hits, the big blast and Austin Deming three-run home run. There were no errors and no one left on. We go bottom four, BYU three, St. Mary's two on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Brian Brady now pitching with a lead in the bottom of the fourth. Leading off the bottom of the fourth, Javi Espinosa, second baseman for St. Mary's. First pitch he sees, he lifts to center field. And Mitch McIntyre barely has to move for that one. That's one gone quickly here in the bottom of the fourth. The left-handed bat of Javi Espinosa is retired. It'll bring up the center fielder, Dalton Mayshore. As we covered yesterday, Mayshore with uh, family ties to the professional level. His father works in the Angels organization after, after having played in the big leagues. And a grandfather who played back in the day for the Montreal Expos. Dalton Mayshore, two for three yesterday with an RBI. An RBI double. And pulls back for strike one taken. Mayshore, when he's on the base pass, is a, a threat. 15 for stick, 16 on a stolen base, tries on the year. And he had an RBI, an RBI in the second. Good pitch. Swing and a miss there to 0-2 from Brady. Mayshore drove in the first run of the game for St. Mary's in the second. He was stranded after doubling. So one for one today and three for four in the series. He'll take low. Thought about offering at it, but it's one and two, the count. BYU's battery today, Ryan Brady on the hill and Mason Strong behind the plate. Mason Strong, one of two impressive freshman catchers for BYU. Colin Ruder, the other. The one-two from Brady. Good There's pitch. a swinging strikeout. Waving through it is Mayshore. And two are gone. That's exactly what you want to do. You take the lead back and you come out and you get two quick outs. You want to shut down any yeah, idea after have you retake a lead. Yep. And that's a good start there to get the first two guys out quickly. Second strikeout of the day for Ryan Brady. Had a swinging K in the second. And a swinging strikeout now in the fourth. Squaring is the nine hitter Hayden Driggs. Pulls back for ball one. A fantastic Friday here in Moraga. Again, temperatures in the 70s. Just a hint of a breeze. Beautiful day for those in attendance. And that's a mighty whiff from Driggs. Swings through it for strike one. Driggs singled in the second St. Mary's run of the day in the second inning. So the Gales got RBIs out of their eight and nine spots today. The one one with two out and no one on. And turning away from that called strike is Driggs. So one two count now from Brady to Driggs. Good slider right there. A couple of Ryans as starting pitchers today. Brady for BYU and Torek for St. Mary's. Kiesel and Roberts, the Saturday matchup, and that's a high fastball, and swinging through it is Driggs. Back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts for Brady, and the Cougars take the lead, then shut down in the bottom of the fourth. We go top five. St. Mary's in the bottom of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. BYU three, Gales two. Top of the fifth next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Ball one taken by Hayden Latham as the Cougs lead off the top of the fifth. Leading 3-2. Cooks trailed 2-0 until a three-run Austin Deming home run in the fourth. That's grounded foul Come through. On, the, that's a, such a hot shot that it goes through the hands of the usually sure-handed third catcher. base coach. Make that play. Trent Pratt. I know his wife, Derisa, at home listening. She'd be highly disappointed in that effort right there. Make that play. The 1-1 to Latham. From Ryan Torek, who's gone all the way into the fifth inning. That's a breaking ball swing, and to his knees, Latham for strike two. The bender in, and he looking to dig himself out of a one-ball, two-strike count with no one out. First batter in the fifth inning for BYU. Cougs three, Gales two. And a 
swinging strikeout for Hayden. So for Hayden, that's four strikeouts in the series to this point. Still looking for his first hit in the series. One gone. Here in the top of the fifth, Brian Call struck out swinging in the first and singled in the third but was stranded. It was a two-out single for Brian in the second. Or the third, beg your pardon. Left-handed bat of Brian Call. And takes ball one. Well, Brian the Gales thought a, they had that. Brian hit a first pitch fastball for a single his last time up, so he went change up, just missed away there. Change up for ball one, the 1-0 count. Strike one. Taken by Call. Call with his third hit and 10 at-bats. As he's worked his way into Mike Littlewood's batting order. The 1-1. One -one. The bender stays high in the zone for ball two. Two and one. I must say the scoreboard operator much more on it today. Yeah, a little bit better, isn't it? With every every pitch, it's uh, on time. And that's a grounder slow roller to the first baseman. The scoop to Torek. He'll step on first, and that'll be a 3-1 ground out, and two are out for BYU here in the top of the fifth. Mitch McIntyre hits next. Mitch on an 0 for 2 day. Line out to first in the first, and then flew out to his position, center field in the third. Mitch looking to extend his hit streak to six games. He also has a six-game reach streak that's concurrent with it. And Mitch has now reached in, I think, 28 of his last 29 going back to last year. Hitting out of the three-hole, Mitch McIntyre. And that finds the 3-4 hole. There's a single. And the hit streak is extended to seven games for McIntyre. Two-out single for BYU. And Mitch reaches on the sharp single to right. So base hit McIntyre. Cougs have their fifth hit of the day. BYU three runs on five hits. And St. Mary's three, uh, two runs on five hits. Neither team's committed an error. And yesterday was an error-free day in the field for both teams. Win now picks up a little more toward right field. As Jacob Field will dig, uh, Jacob Wilk will dig in with two outs and one on. McIntyre takes his lead off first. First pitch is ball one from Ryan Torek. Love to see uh, Jake split a gap here and see if he uh, can score Mitch from first. Time is called, and a mound conference for the first time for the Gales. Well, Jake's put some pretty good swings on him, so I think they're just talking. Get him in the right spot here, plus uh, give the guy in the bullpen, he's up to 70, what, eight pitches now, so obviously there's going to be a guy in the bullpen going. Give him a little bit of time. Yesterday's curveball specialist Ryan Wiltz is out to Give some new baseballs to the home plate umpire. As he got his pitch count up yesterday, Wilk, you talk about good swings on the ball. He singled and scored in the second yesterday, had a solo home run in the sixth, and has a single in two at-bats here today. Singled and scored in the fourth. He came in on the three-run Austin Deming home run. You might see uh, Mitch take off in this situation to get in scoring position with two outs. Six for six on stolen bases yep. this year is McIntyre. BYU as a team, 18 for 22 on stolen base tries. McIntyre had a stole ba stolen base yesterday in the eighth for BYU's 18th steal of the year. The 1 0 to Jacob Wilk. That's a breaking ball in for strike one. One and one. I took the slider that was on the inside corner there. Even counts, a ball and a strike, two out, and McIntyre dancing off first. Cougs have a 3-2 lead here in the top of the fifth, almost halfway home here in Moraga. Mm, just That's missed that pitch. Fouled back to the screen through the batter's box. It's a little early on that breaking ball. Definitely with two strikes, I would not be surprised if uh, Mitch is taken off here. So one and two the count, two out. And McIntyre takes his lead off first. 
BYU leading a one-run game here in the fifth, leading at 3-2. Ryan Torek comes set. Fires back to first. McIntyre dives back safely. Torek's now into the low 80s in his pitch count. Will hitting 297 on the year. Catcher called timeout. So time granted on a 1-2 count. Two out and one on for BYU. Cougs with their fifth hit of the game here in the fifth inning. Both teams five hits apiece. One ball is two strikes and back to first again. The check of McIntyre, Almanza. Well, well you, just, you don't want to throw Wilk a fastball here, so you know he's going breaking ball. Therefore, it's a good pitch for Mitch to, to pick the still on, so he's trying to keep him close. Mitch measuring his lead at first. Tara kicks and fires. It's a high fastball popped up to right field. A lot of sun there. Right fielder man, ooh, I thought he might have lost it for a half second, but he watches it into his glove, and that'll do it for BYU in the top of the fifth. For the Cougs, no runs on a hit, no errors, one left on. We go bottom five, halfway done here in Moraga. Cougs three, Gales two on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Bottom five here in Moraga, BYU three, St. Mary's two, Ryan Brady. Facing Christopher Campos to lead off the Gales' bottom of the fifth. Discount tire presents on the rubber. A look at both teams' pitching numbers. We'll let Bright Brady deliver this 1-0 pitch for strike one. Tell you that Brady threw four complete. He's allowed five hits, two runs, both earned. Has walked one, struck out three, no wild pitches. One ball, one strike to Campos. And he fouls it through the box. Foul for strike two. One ball, two strikes. St. Mary's pitching through five. Innings for the Gales, five hits, three runs, all earned. One base on balls, four strikeouts, one wild pitch, one hit batsman. That's on the rubber, brought to you by Discount Tire. Discount Tire, let's get you taken care of. One ball, two strikes. From Ryan Brady to Christopher Campos. Ray Grubel, Tuckett Slade with you here in Moraga. Middle game of a three-game set. Slight delay here. What's Just wants the guys in the dugout, he said. We're set to go again. Lead off batter here in the bottom of the fifth. Cougars three, Gales two. Campos takes high heat for ball two. Two and two. Yeah, I like that uh, sequence right there. See if he'll chase that. 5-3 ground out in the first. Line out to third in the second. He hits now in the fifth. A one hitter, top of the order for the Gales. Low for ball three. The count goes full to Campos. One thing the Cougars have not done today is allowed a lead batter to reach. That's a swinging Good. strikeout. So through it and a swinging K. That's three consecutive swinging strikeouts now for Ryan Brady. The last two of the fourth and the first of the fifth as Mayshore Driggs and now Campos have gone down swinging as Ryan Brady maybe settles into a bit of a groove here as he gets into his fifth inning of work. His long outing, Tuck, it's only five yep. innings, so... This is a quick inning. Mike might let him ride a little bit. What do you yeah, think? Uh, it depends. I mean, we have Bryce Robeson able to go in the pen as well. So a square and a pop-up. And diving to oh, make the catch ahead. Ryan, is Ryan Brady ahead. for two out. Fire guy, go ahead. Nathan Chong popped up the bunt attempt and jumping off the mound. And full extension for the right-hander as Ryan Brady records out number two on the pop-up to the pitcher. That is two quick outs. Four and two-thirds in the books for Ryan Brady. Working with a one-run lead. It was a tight game yesterday. Another tight one today. 3-2 Cougs on top. Left-handed bat of Almanza. Grounds it to Pratt. Nicely Pratt done. Pratt at second. Fires to first. And it's a three-up, three-down inning for St. Mary's in the bottom of the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. We go to the top of the sixth. BYU three, St. Mary's two on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. 
BYU nursing a 3-2 lead to the top of the sixth inning we go. New pitcher for the Gales is Jack Snook. Snook making his 14th appearance. He spells starter Ryan Torque, who went five complete. Snook, 20 innings pitched. Start of the game. He's given up 18 hits, 10 runs. Only four of them earned, however. And his 20 innings pitched to struck out 21 to four bases on balls. So better than five to one. Strikeout to walk ratio. For the new pitcher for St. Mary's, number 35, the right-hander, Jack Snook. BYU trailed 2-0 until an Austin Deming three-run home run in the fourth inning. And the Kooks have kept that lead. Ryan Sapiti, who scored on that three-run blast to left, will step in to lead off the Cougars' sixth. Sapiti walked and was stranded in the second and was hit by a pitch and came around to score on the Deming home run in the fourth. Sapiti at the dish, snook on the hill, and the sixth inning is now underway. As the first pitch Sapiti sees, he lifts to right field. And the right fielder, Mann, will watch it into the leather for out number one on pitch number one of the sixth inning. And that's now three flyouts to Mann in right field, and with yeah. each of them, Tuckett, he's had to do a little work out there There's with the sun where it is. The, he's got to protect his eyes there with the sun. Does a good job, though. That last one, I thought he was going to drop last half yeah. inning. Because he has a glove up, glove yeah. dropped, and then brought it up at the last second. So one out for BYU, and BYU's hitting hero so far today is Austin Deming with a three-run shot. And he'll take away for ball one. And not just today, but it was a two-hit day yesterday for Dem, and a two-for-two two day so far today with a single and a three-run shot. Austin hitting out of the sixth hole today. The 1-0 with one out and no one on. That's piped in and then fouled down the third baseline. Well, we need to keep adding on here. Obviously played with some danger yesterday, only having a two-run lead in the ninth. We need to keep adding on. These close games, we haven't had too many of these close type games, especially under six runs, right? It's just unheard of. And so Cougars haven't been in a ton of low scoring or uh, one run games. And that's well, hit well too. Stay fair. To left, will it be fair? Yes, it will. It will. Yes, it will. And it'll be over the yellow wow. line for a line drive home run. Wow. To left field. Okay, Austin Deming, have a weekend. My goodness, that ball was 10 feet off the the ground the whole way. Obviously, like 110 miles an hour off the bat. Wow, that was hit well. It's a line drive shot to the left field wow. corner and a home run for Austin Deming. A solo shot after a three-run blast. It's a three-for-three three day and a four-RBI day, mm. and the Cougs have a two-run lead at four to two. It was hit well, but it was a line. It was a oh. rope to the left field corner. It goes over the yellow line. It's yeah. a home run. He had five RBIs on the year coming into today. He's he got four, four today. today. Yeah. Like I've been saying the last couple of games with him, we need him to pick up and get RBIs going, and that was a big knock. 3.30 down the line and left. So you don't need a lot to get out there, but the way it was hit, just laced off the bat. Again, didn't have a lot of height. That was a line drive home run. Yeah. Just inside the pole down the left field line. Do you have to mention how high their wall is here? Because, I mean... It looks what, 10, 12 feet? Doesn't it look? Yeah, it looks it looks 10 across the from from pole to pole. There's no variation yeah. in the fence height. That's probably 10, right? Yeah, it was. I mean, it got 12 feet off the ground from the minute he hit it. It was just laced. So BYU tacks one on, and the lead is two, four to two. By the way, catching up with the count to Brock Watkins. It's one and one with one out here in the top of the sixth. We'll take from ball two. Will Brock. So Austin Deming with four RBI, two home runs, and he's now five for seven in the series. The 2-2 two -two to Brock Watkins, or the 2-1, beg your pardon. And fouls it through the box and back to the padding. Two balls, two strikes. And he began with Ryan Sapiti flying out to right. And with the bases empty, Deming lines one to the left field corner for a home run. And the Cougs have now scored four straight after going down 2-0. 4-2 in 
4-2, BYU top six. Swinging strikeout, third strike not caught. Catcher finds it and fires to first to officially record the out of Brock Watkins. So Watkins strikes out for out number two. Mason Strong struck out, grounded out in his first two plate appearances. Hits now with BYU leading it by two. Four runs, six hits for BYU. Two runs, five hits for St. Mary's. Again, the Cougs don't lose high-scoring games. When they lose, it'll tend to be a day they have a tough time putting barrel to ball. If they can get the bats going, they're going to they're gonna win more often than not. They've still got that perfect record when they score six or more, and they're climbing toward that number right now. It's a 4-2 lead for BYU in the top of the sixth. As Strong takes ball one from Jack Snook. Snook in relief of Ryan Torek. Mm. Smacks the leather for strike one. Close pitch there. That's a hard pitch to hit, though. It's that high fastball away. Your mind tells you not to swing at that. The right-hander on the hill is Snook. The right-handed bat of Mason Strong on an 0 for 2 day. Wind up and delivery, and that'll be a swinging strike for one and two with two out and no one on for BYU in the top of the sixth. I just battle here with two. Every run driven in today has been courtesy of Austin Deming. He's got them all in a 4-2 lead for BYU. The 1-2 from Snook to Strong. Good battle there. And Strong keeps it alive and fouls it into the parking lot to our right down the first baseline. 3.30 to the poles in left and right field. 3.70 in the gaps and 400 to straight away. Where the batter's eye is a black screen in front of the trees, the grove of trees that rings the outfield here in Moraga. That's well hit. Good swing. And that will be a base hit to center field to right center. It gets down for Mason Strong, and Mason Strong has his first hit of the day and his fourth hit as a BYU Cougar. Yeah, did a great job on that slider running away. He just fouled the better one off the pitch before and then got one that was a little bit more elevated and hit it right back up the middle. It's a good swing. Good battle by the freshman there yeah. to stay alive and then get something out of it at the end, and the Cougs have another two-out hit. Cougs have had two-out base runners a few times today. It'll bring Ozzie Pratt. Pratt's looking to do something here. Hasn't been on base yet in the series. 0 for 6, a couple of Ks. Out of the 9 hole, Pratt, that's dirted. And almost, go. did they get him? They got him. Oh, no he tag, got back though. ahead. No tag. He got back. He was caught off the bag, was strong, but the throw was a little up, or a little, bit, a little too far between first and second, and allowed Mason Strong to get back before the tag. I love the initial read, though. He's reading ball down, ball and dirt, but the catcher, instead of trying to block it, he picked it, and that's what uh, gave him almost a chance there. But if he blocks that, Mason gets the second easy with two outs. Ends up as a ball, 1-0. Yeah. Strike taken for 1-1. One and one. So an even count with two out and a runner on. That runner is Mason Strong here in the top of the sixth. BYU with a 4-2 lead. Fell down 2-0 in the second. A crooked number three in the fourth and a solo shot from Deming here in the sixth after his three-run blast in the fourth. Two Austin Deming home runs doing all the damage. Oh, And that's man. lined just foul down the first baseline. Good contact by Ozzie, but about a yard shy of a... It could have been a run scoring hit yeah, to the right field yeah, corner. Where that's hit down that corner, that's a long way for the right fielder to get to. Yeah. And Mason isn't the fastest guy on the team, but he's not the slowest. I'll battle with two here, Ozzie. Get Latham up. Yeah, he, doesn't, he, doesn't have a, he doesn't have a lumbering catcher's build at all, Mason Strong. He's a little more toward the lanky. Oh, and that's ripped. Nicely done. Up the middle. Pitcher stabbed at it, but it got past his glove, and it'll be a sharp single to right center. And so that's another two-out hit as Ozzie Pratt is on base for the first time in the series. Yeah. Holding at second is Strong. Back-to-back -back singles for BYU, bringing up the top of the order, Hayden Latham. This is where you got to make them pay here, Greg. You get back-to-back two-out hits. You know, you have a runner in scoring position. Latham's got to come up with a big knock here. He's really struggled this weekend, but he's been so so big in these spots for us this year. 0 for 7 in the series. His only time on base was a leadoff walk to begin the game yesterday. And of those seven retirements, four are strikeouts. So Hayden now hits with runners on first and second. 
Strong at second. Pratt at first. Top of the order up for BYU. Mm, and see, those Hayden's going to watch that in. That looked pretty meaty yeah, for him, you right? You can't take that pitch if you're Hayden. Be all over that. And hammer it down the left field line. Back-to-back -back two out singles. Earlier in the inning, solo home run, line shot to left from Austin Deming. No balls and a strike. Two out and two on. That is a Bach. That is a Bach. Yep. He, he, he opened his hands before he stepped off. So both runners advance a base. That'll put two runners in scoring position for Hayden Latham, who hits 310 with runners in scoring position. Better than his season average of 233 in a mound visit. His fourth cut. Will it? Oh, no, it's going to be coming to the line to converse. He's arguing, I think, yeah. He's gonna, so That's Greg that. Moore, the head coach, yeah. is going to argue the Bach with the second base umpire, Barney Navarro. Navarro will approach. And Moore will plead his case. But the Bach call advances strong to third and Pratt to well, second. I think he got it right. From my view, he separated his hands before he stepped off like he was going to throw. And so because of that, starting that motion and then step off, there's the Bach. But the... Uh, Coach Moore is arguing that. If, but, uh, if it stands, it'll be uh, the Gales' second Bach of the year. So now second and third, two outs, a huge spot here. Hayden's hitting 310 with runners in scoring position. He's got 14 ribbies on the year. It's a great time right here. Just a single up the middle. Ozzy's going to score easy from second. He's tied for third in RBIs on this BYU team with those 14. Now it'll be a catcher conference with pitcher Jack Snook. Uh, look, they're going to walk him, it looks like. They're going to walk him to get to Brian Call. Intentionally walk Hayden, which is like, why would they do that? Hayden is Has, 0 for 6 on the weekend. And we'll take it, though, right? I mean, BYU will certainly yeah, take it. Brian Call has already got uh, two knocks on the weekend and a knock earlier today. So the base has become loaded with two out. Brian Call, 1 for 3 today with a single in the third. Come on, B. Call, big spot. Boy, do we need you right here. Single yesterday. Single today as the bases are now loaded. Uh, I think they did that because they might have a lefty in the pen. And so this mound visit will be a pitching change for St. Mary's. We'll take a break. 60-second break. Cougs have the bases loaded, leading by two. You're in the top of the six. That is BYU 4, St. Mary's 2 back in 60 here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. And with St. Mary's going to a left-hander. BYU will pinch it for the left-handed hitting Brian Call. Alex Sardina will be in the batter's box. Gales make a change to Ryan Doherty. The Southpaw Doherty, 6'2", 175, the junior from Mission Viejo, California, will be the third pitcher for the Gales today. So lefty on the hill will bring up a righty in the box, and it will be Alex Sardina. Yeah, and Greg, these are the time uh, right here. This is what you have. You have your right hand, left handed DH type right now, and you have Sardi up, who, you know, he's had some really big at bats, but of late he struggled just a little bit striking out. But uh, this is a pitcher who the ball's going to run more into his barrel than away from it, and that's where he's been struggling a little bit. But you've seen him early in, in his career here for BYU that when he gets a fastball middle in, he doesn't miss that pitch, and he hits it hard and, and does some good damage for this team. Yeah, his nine hits, five are extra base hits. Yeah. Three doubles, a triple, and a home run, hitting 290 in just 31 at-bats. Ryan Darty making his fourth appearance is all. He's only pitched two innings. He's given up two hits. A run, it was earned. He struck out three and walked one, a 4.50 ERA for Darty. He'll face Sardina. And Sardina has hits in three of his last five games played. Eight RBI on his nine hits. BYU four. And St. Mary's two with BYU hitting with the bases loaded here in the top of the sixth inning. That's all developing with two outs. Earlier in the inning, it was an Austin Deming line drive home run to the left field corner. After a Brock Watkins strikeout made two out. Single from Strong. Single from Pratt. There was a Bach. And then a base on balls to Latham. Loads the bases for Alex Sardina. 
Runners dance off their bases. Dougherty kicks and fires and pipes it in for strike one called on Sardina. Oh, great time to hit as you live for. Pressure's on the pitcher here. Bases loaded two outs. As a hitter, just have some fun here. The 0-1 to Sardi. Pitcher comes set. The sacks are stacked with Cougs. BYU by two, top six, and Sardi takes low. Good Ball take. one. Good take right there. Sardi hitting 364 with runners in scoring position, hitting 500 bases loaded. The 1-1, two out, bases loaded, grounds it to the shortstop, bottles oh, he it. He boots it. Everyone's safe and a run will score. Hey, hey, he just hit the ball hard, right? That's what he did. He hit it extremely hard, over 100 miles an hour off the bat, right to Campos, and it took a little bit of a late hop, bounced off his uh, wrist and hits him in the chest, and we get another run. If you just hit the ball hard, good things happen. It'll be the first error of the game. The E6 will allow the fifth run to score for BYU. Pratt will go to third, Latham to second, and Sardina reaches on the E6. Make it hurt right here. Might have been the inning ending ground out. Instead, the inning is extended. Cougs now another crooked number inning as hitting is Mitch McIntyre with the bases loaded. And the count is now 0-1. The scoreboard showed the previous count. The umpire turns to make sure the scoreboard's accurate. Now it is. No balls and a strike to Mitch McIntyre. McIntyre one for three today. Singled and was stranded an inning ago. Three in the fourth, two in the sixth. 5-2 lead, BYU. And that's going to be ball one to McIntyre. Good take. Yeah, Ryan wanted that slider called, but a great take by Mitch just down and away. This is where Mitch is really good at lefty on left, hitting it in that six hole, going the opposite field here. The left-handed bat of Mitch McIntyre facing the lefty, Ryan Daugherty. 1-1, one, one, two out, sacks remain stacked with Cougars, who lead 5-2. Ooh, ooh, and ooh, that's... Almost threw it away. Yeah, I thought it was coming at us low, but in our direction as that was yeah. away from the left-handed hitting McIntyre, and it's collected by the catcher. Makes a nice stab at it. Two balls and a strike with two out. Five runs, eight hits for BYU. Two runs, five hits for St. Mary's. Gale scored the first two. BYU five in a row since. That sixth run's been the magic number for BYU this year. Mm. Mm. The take for Just strike two. Barely. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and three on. Bases loaded. Pratt on third. Latham on second. You get that slider running away, just slap it into left and get two more runs. Sardina at first. They're all on for Mitch McIntyre. Seven-game hit streak going for Mitch. He got a hit earlier today, and that's low. Blocked by the catcher. All right, well, they're all moving now. Full count. Everybody's in motion. On a full count with two out. And every base occupied. A hit uh, through the infield will definitely score two. The wind picks up to right. Great time to hit, Mitch. Stay in your zone or take your walk. Lefty v. Lefty here. Southpaw on the hill. Left-handed bat in the box. Runners will be on the move for Mitch McIntyre. Cougs by three. Three on base. Good the pitch take. Good is taken take. low for a base on balls and another run scores. It's another three-run inning for BYU as McIntyre is walked and scoring is Pratt. Take what they give you, and there's that magic number six, Greg, that I like on the scoreboard. Six to two. BYU scored six in a row. The Cougars on the year 11 and 0 when they score six or more runs. They are at the number, and the sacks remain stacked for Jacob Wilk. Wilk take. with a single and a run scored in the fourth. Chance to completely blow this game open right here with a big knock. Ooh, Latham, he, he's Latham seen now at well. third. Sardina at second. McIntyre at first. Ninth hitter of the inning. And Jacob Wilk will see strike one piped in from Ryan Daugherty. Ryan Cipede led off the inning with a fly out to right. Then it was Austin Deming with a solo shot, a strikeout, and then five consecutive batters reach for BYU. 
Two more runs cross after all, the Deming solo shot. All with two outs here. After all, the, the, all the batters yeah. reaching F5 in a row with two outs. That's low for ball one from Doherty. Third pitcher of the day for St. Mary's. There have been four pitchers used. BYU's gone with Brady. The whole yeah, you wonder if they'll go back out with him. This has been a long inning, and yeah. the starters can really cool down. Three of the four pitchers used today, by the way. All their three of them have the first name of Ryan today. One and one, the count. Two out. Base is still loaded for BYU for Jacob Wilk. Takes a cut. And it's foul tip strike. Strike two. Did he catch a piece of it or not? No, he, he, he missed that. Okay. Good change up right there. One ball, two strikes for Jacob. Ninth hitter in the inning. A three-run inning so far for BYU. Southpaw on the mound. The right-handed bat of big Jacob Wilk in the batter's box. A single and a couple of flyouts for Jacob today. From the stretch comes Doherty. The kick and delivery. And that's inside and low. And a good take from Jacob for ball two. He saw that well. Good adjustment there. Wilk with hits now in five of his last six games. He's reached in seven in a row. And looks to plate another run or two or more for BYU. Bases loaded and an even count with two out. Kook six, scales two. Mm. And that is a taken strike and a backwards K and a walk to the dugout for Jacob Wilk. But a lot of damage got done in the sixth inning for BYU. Three runs on three hits. There was an error. And there were three runners left on. We go to the bottom of the sixth. BYU six, St. Mary's two on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Bottom of the sixth inning. BYU with a 6-2 to two lead. Gale scored the first two. BYU the last six. Three in the fourth and three in the sixth for BYU. And remaining on the mound for BYU is Ryan Brady. Into his sixth inning of work. If he records an out, it'll be his longest outing of the year. We saw Jack Sterner with his long outing yesterday. You put up a three spot, and then he goes 3-0 to the leadoff hitter. Come on, Rye, get back in the zone here. You can't give him free bases. And BYU's not given up, or not had a lead runner on for St. Mary's yet today. 3-0. Brady's got a battle back. The windup and delivery, and does his job. Gets a called strike on the take from Chris Santiago. So, 3-1 the count to Santiago. Popped up to short in the first, and was singled, singled and was stranded in the third. 3-1 from Brady to Santiago. Brady working briskly and lost him. That's Hine away, and so it's a lead runner on for St. Mary's as they play catch up, as they did yesterday. But they're down four. They only trailed by as many as two yesterday. Six to two, BYU leads it. Santiago aboard with a base on balls. And they gave, they gave him one, one batter of leeway, and that'll do it. So it'll tie Ryan Brady's long outing of the year. Did not get an out in the sixth, so he goes five complete and will be pulled. Coach Mike Ludwood asks for the ball, gives Ryan a pat on the back, and he leaves with a four-run lead. It's a PZ Printing pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Let's take a 60-second break for this pitching change. A new BYU pitcher after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. New pitcher for BYU is Bryce Robison. Roby enters the game that BYU leads by a score of 6-2. to two. We are in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here in Moraga, California, BYU and St. Mary's middle game of a three-game series. Cougars looking to draw even in this set. Bryce Robison about to make his 10th appearance. He's made two starts on the year. Midweek starts at Utah and Utah Valley and got wins in both of those games as he went two scripted innings to begin the game. He's pitched 18 innings on the year, given up 16 hits in those 18 innings. Nine runs, eight of them earned. A better than five to one strikeout to walk ratio at 16 Ks to three free passes. Roby's ERA is four even on the year. High pitch count of 71 coming in his relief effort against Gonzaga last weekend. Yeah, and that, uh, that outing, he was really good at times, and then he just kind of fell apart one inning. And that's where the Zags did all their scoring in the runs against him is that one inning. Other than that, he pitched out of some jams, did some really good things. He just left some pitches down the middle in that one inning against the Zags, and that hurt him in that game. 
he's a four pitch mix that uh, can really, really pitch down in the zone and keep batters, batters off balance. See what Roby can do to help extricate BYU from a lead runner on situation for the first time today. It took until the sixth inning for the Gales to get their lead batsman aboard. And Roby goes right back to first base on the pickoff try. And that's the guy you've got to worry about. BYU has 10 pickoffs on the year, but four from this one pitcher, Bryce Robison. Yeah, he has an elite pickoff move to first. Quick feet. Bryce has almost as many pickoffs this year as BYU had as a team last year. Robison delivers and gets the called strike on Gavin Napier. Napier flew out to center in the second, grounded out 5-3 in the third. He now steps in in the bottom of the sixth. His team down four at 6-2. to two. The Gales scored the first two, coming in the second, then three in the fourth, three in the sixth, high in the zone, and one and two. A one and one, the count from row B2, Gavin Napier. Yeah, you'd love to get you a ground ball right here. I'll try to get you a little double play, take away that free base you just gave him. The one, one. Grounded to Roby, to Watkins Just for one, like to Wilk that. for two, and it's a 1-6-3 DP, and two are gone here in the bottom of the sixth. Grounded right up the middle, flashing leather is Robison. Watkins at second for one, fires to Jacob at first for two, and just like that, two are gone in the bottom of the sixth. The bases are clear for Blake Mann. Those, uh, those double plays always make me nervous because pitchers seem to when they throw that ball to second, they get too excited and they overthrow either high or low. But that was a perfect strike right to the bag to Watkins to first. Nicely executed. Ball one on the take from Mann. That'll get Bryce in the game, won't it? Yes, it will. So the 1-0. Mann with his open stance. Closes and swings. Fouls back to the padding for a ball and a strike. Two out, no one on. And no one on is the important thing after Santiago led off the inning with a base on balls. So first time St. Mary's puts a lead man aboard, and he is erased on the 1-6-3 DP. Cougs have their 24th double play of the year in their 24th game of the year. Two balls and a strike now to Blake Mann, the right fielder. Walked and scored in the second, grounded out 6-3 in the third to end that inning. Takes a mighty cut and swings through. Strike two. Two and two with two out. No one on for St. Mary's bottom six. Yesterday's game was the first late lead given up by BYU all year in that 4-3 heartbreaker. The wild pitch scoring the winning run on the bottom of the ninth for St. Mary's. That's laced. Go get that, Ryan. Bending toward right field, and Ryan Sapiti is going to run over and make the catch. So three down in the bottom of the sixth. We go to the top of the seventh with BYU leading at six to two for St. Mary's. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Cougar six, Gales two on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.